Phyrexians have an unorthodox breeding practice. Yeah, not a sentence I really ever thought I would be saying, but many MTG fans just assume that Phyrexians are made via the corruption of glistening oil, which forces their victim's will to serve the greater hive mind. There are, however, other methods in which new Phyrexians are quote-unquote born, and this disturbing practice is best seen in one of the most famous Phyrexian family trees, the bloodline of Atroxa. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sybin, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, we have a great bit of education for any of you, and I assume it's most of us players, who have wondered, oh gee, I'm really curious how Phyrexians reproduce. For 99% of the monsters you see on New Phyrexia, it's easily explained as the virus that gets into the bloodstream of mortal creatures and corrupts them into subservient members of the Greater One. It's very much a hive mind Borg situation going on. Not so unsimilar to the way the Eldrazi Titans can corrupt normal people into these twisted abominations to serve their interests. But this isn't their only means of reproducing. Phyrexians also have a much more hands-on approach to crafting singularly powerful minions. Custom projects, if you would. They can essentially build their own offspring, suiting whatever purpose they see fit. And while you could just say, hey, this isn't reproduction, and there's certainly no parental line that's followed in this method, yeah, try saying that to the likes of Elish Norn or Atraxa. When a new Phyrexian is created in this way, the architect goes on to take a very familial role, often going by a paternal title like mother or father. While rare, we do have at least one strong example of this happening in the Magic the Gathering story, and it's the subject of today's video. Let's explore the strange family tree of Atraxa. And as always guys, if you're enjoying these videos, especially this one, consider supporting us by leaving us a like, becoming a subscriber, and sharing it with friends. In order to properly examine the full family tree of a Phyrexian bloodline, you must follow the glistening oil. Glistening oil is the substance from which all Phyrexians are born. It corrupts organic material, turns flesh to metal, and bends minds to serve the will of the greater Phyrexian purpose. All Phyrexians, big or small, are created this way, even ones born from the machinations of other Phyrexians. It will always play a part in their births. So, dating the glistening oil back, all Phyrexians can trace their lineage back to Yogmoth. While it seems like a no-brainer to most of the Vorthos community, Yogmoth is the original father of machines, birthing the first of the Phyrexians and creating the Phyresis process that uses glistening oil to create more Phyrexians. So as a great, 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 and probably many more greats grandfather, Yogmoth is at the top of our Phyrexian family tree. The next branch in the lineage would have to be the Planeswalker Karn and his handmade golem, Memnark. Karn, an artificial planeswalker, first encountered glistening oil as part of the legacy weapon created by Urza to act as a weapon against Yagmoth. While the legacy weapon was successful in defeating Yagmoth, Karn gained both a planeswalker spark as well as traces of glistening oil. The planeswalker spark acts as a natural cure, or at least is resistant to the Phyrexian completion process. So for years, Karn carried with him this corruption, but didn't really have any real effects on him. This changed, however, when Karn sacrificed his spark in order to close temporal rifts that threatened to destroy Dominaria. In relinquishing his spark, Karn began to feel the corruption of Phyrexia. This is where his creation, Memnarch, comes into play. A golem made from the Mirari, an ancient and little understood artifact that grants wishes, Karn inadvertently left some oil during the building process, and Memnarch too was slowly corrupted. The Phyrexian madness made Memnarch jealous of his creator who could travel the multiverse. So, in an attempt to mimic that power, Memnarch funneled in mortal lives from other planes and transplanted them to the world Karn had created, now called Mirrodin. Over many generations, Memnark watched these organic beings evolve with the plane, and waited for one of them to be born with a planeswalker spark. He would then steal the spark for himself. His goals, however, wouldn't be achieved before his downfall. However, it was by Memnark's hands that the next branch of Phyrexian life would be born. These organic beings were perfect fodder for which the spread of glistening oil would grow. 
with more and more organic beans being corrupted by the glistening oil, powerful individuals began to supplement their power around specific colors of mana as well as their idea of this new purpose they all seem to share. This would see the rise of Elish Norn. She is a Praetor, a powerful leader in New Phyrexian society. She's aligned with white mana and runs the machine orthodoxy, the religious and often zealous ideological aspect of Phyrexian culture. Her adherence to the One, the idea that all are equal in the grand design of Phyrexia, serving Phyrexia, and spreading it to others as the one glaring truth of the multiverse. She foolhardily believes in this path and will defend it from even other Phyrexians who don't fall in line, all while converting the small pockets of individualism left of Mirrodin into New Phyrexia. In this mission, Elish Norn needed a weapon, a symbol to cement the idea of the One, a representative of their singular purpose. The Praetor wasn't shy in rewarding organic beings who showed great promise with the gift of completion. This, she would grant to one particular Mirren angel who showed such tenacity that Elish Norn actually respected the holy figure. The angel had defended a Mirren retreat to the bitter end, wiping out countless Phyrexian minions. A being of such power was not one to be wasted to death. This angel would serve as a particularly powerful minion, but Elish Norn wanted something more. She invited the other Praetors, her colleagues of other mana alignments, to collaborate with her on this angel's transformation. While Urobrask, the red aligned Praetor, declined the invitation as he was the most free-willed and individualistic of the group, the other three granted their power to this new creation. Shieldred and her black mana, Jingitaxius and his blue mana, Vorinclex and his green mana. They all came together in a brutal ritual led by the white mana of Elish Norn. Because the angel had also originally been associated with white mana and Elish Norn taking the opportunity to extract a little bit more influence, the resulting creation would be subservient to her and her alone. This was the birth of Atroxa, the next branch in our Phyrexian family tree. Atroxa was born out of the efforts of four Phyrexian Praetors, but it was Elish Norn who claimed Atroxa as her daughter. Granting her the title of the Praetor's Voice, this Phyrexian angel would serve the will of New Phyrexia and act as the representative of all Praetors. Though Atroxa was meant to be a symbol of their unity to the singular purpose, the angel went on to serve and protect the Fair Basilica, the domain of Elish Norn, further cementing their relationship. Within the Fair Basilica, Atroxa's main duty was to create a legion of Phyrexianized angels. These flying monstrosities, abominations twisted from their original righteous purpose, would go on to sing the songs of Phyrexia's unifying presence. Atroxa claims to be the mother of each of these angelic creations, which leads us to another branch of the family tree, the daughter of Atroxa, the Phyrexian angel, Ixhale. As Scion of Atroxa, Ixhel stood as one of the angel's most powerful weapons, leading the charge in many tasks that would serve the greater Phyrexian order. One such task was the assassination of the high-ranking Dross Pit Phyrexian, Geth. Geth had been around since the founding of New Phyrexia and was in fact one of its first willingly completed participants, though that was for his own personal benefit. Geth had always been an issue because he was never fully completed, his head and his mind was still far too individualistic, seeking personal power rather than serving the One. The final straw broke when Geth started making contracts with lower Phyrexians who were either not totally completed or their completion went wrong leaving them damaged. The ideology of a new Phyrexia under Elish Norn is that those who cannot serve the One will be broken down and made into something that can. These helpless souls would be discarded and destroyed. Geth offered them protection so long as they served him, an affront to Elish Norn. Atroxa was commanded by her mother to deal with Geth. That responsibility then fell to Atroxa's daughter, Ixhale. Ixhale performed her duty as charged, chopping off Geth's organic head. Yet in doing so, something expanded through Ixhale's mind. This idea of personal choice, something that seemed foreign to her at first, but started to grow with more thought. Atroxa was completely subservient to the One, but Elish Norn's granddaughter had a bit of a rebellious side. Feeling pity for Geth and some of his fallen, pathetic Phyrexians, Ixhale, under her own authority, created a new being from their remains. 
her own progeny named Vishgraz. Though Vishgraz was born out of disobedience, Ixel simply meant to bring it to serve her family, to serve Phyrexia. Though her mother, Atroxa, didn't receive this gift as well as Ixel had hoped. Atroxa saw Vishgraz as nothing more than a symbol of individualism. She wasn't ordered to create something new. Ixhale had done something for herself, not solely for the machine orthodoxy, an affront to everything Atroxa and Elish Norn stood for. Atroxa ordered Ixhale to destroy Vishgraz. Ixhale obeyed her mother, abandoning her creation to the Dross Pits. Though for the first time in our Phyrexian family tree, we actually see the true signs of a familial connection. In watching her creation slink into the swamps, knowing it wouldn't survive alone, Ixhale had a desire to join Vishgraz. It was fleeting, but the feeling was there. A feeling that by all rights, shouldn't have even passed through Ixhale's mind. Certainly a feeling never once experienced by Elish Norn or Atroxa. The true feeling of a mother connecting with a child. So in summary, the family tree goes something like this. Yagmoth, the greatest of grandfathers creating the glistening oil. The oil goes to Karn, who transfers it to Memnark on his own plane of Mirrodin. Memnark brings organic life to Mirrodin, which in turn gets infected with oil. From these creatures, Elish Norn is born. Elish Norn creates her daughter Atroxa, who goes on to create her daughter Ixhale, who goes on to create Vishgraz. It may be a bit unorthodox, but it is the greatest family of New Phyrexia, and who knows what other births may spawn from this lineage. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Let me know your thoughts of the Phyrexian family tree in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, consider supporting the channel by leaving it a like, becoming a subscriber, and of course, sharing it with your friends. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, guys, see ya!